This is the Ergo Slice Bushcraft from Bruce Rugg, Wild Old Knives. Now the first thing that I do with a knife that sort of includes this in its scope of work, and sometimes even when it don't, I use it to carve up some cedar. Now cedar is not a hard wood by any stretch of the imagination, but you don't want to jump into something extremely demanding right away. So I carved up over a thousand strips off some cedar. And that's mainly to look at, well, the performance of the edge from a sort of low stress, very introductory benchmark. No effect on the edge, no chipping, no rolling, no deformation or fracture of any kind, which is decent. The handle ergonomics in a forward hammer grip, thumb over the top right here, were generally pretty good. A couple of small concerns, this area right here on the handle could be rounded and flow towards the blade a little better. This area right here, the heel of the blade, the same way, could be rounded a bit better. In regards to the handle itself, no real complaints. The only issue is that the front of the handle right here is a bit too thin for a forward hammer grip. However, there are other grips in which that works very well and for a rear hammer grip it's ideal. For a front pinch grip it works very well and the same on the side. And that's just a matter of compromise. In regards to performance, uh, it performed right alongside my 1260 Mora, which has a standard single bevel grind. This one, however, doesn't. Basically, it has a convex grind, which tapers from about right here. As you approach the edge, it turns into, or steepens, to the same angle that's on the most of the single bevel knives your standard Mora's, and then it has a very slight secondary edge bevel. So it has basically a three-stage compound bevel. And what that does is that the steepening of the bevel near the edge gives greater durability. The angle just up from that gives you similar cutting ability as a single bevel Mora on most work. And then on deep cutting, because again it scallops back and reduces the thickness up here, it generally cuts a bit better. And that's one of the advantages of doing a compound grind. You can get more durability and more cutting ability in the same package. Now moving beyond cedar, I did some very, very heavy cuts into pine. And again, I was comparing it to a regular single bevel Mora. There's my very well used Mora 2000. And Bruce's uh, Ergo Slice Bushcraft was performing a little bit better than the Mora, which I would expect, but I'd want to do more cutting to really quantify it and put a number on it because I only did a few points with each one of them. And wood grains and such can vary significantly from piece to piece. But again, I would expect it to cut better because it has, again, the same angle as you approach the edge as your normal single bevel Mora but because the grind is higher and it sweeps back and thins out, you'll get a uh, better performance. The other issue is that, as you can see, there's a cant between the blade and the handle. And what that does is it presents the blade at an angle into the wood and stops that sort of tilting back motion that happens and allows your wrist and your hand to be in a stronger position. And again, it sort of felt like that, but I'd want to do a lot more cutting before I actually talked about the performance that that was actually making. So overall, some light performance on some wood, exactly as how I'd expect it to go, with, like I said, a few ergonomic concerns forward. Moving outside, uh, it does exactly again as how you would expect. I did some push cuts through some uh, thicker vegetation, was cutting some alder and similar wood. If you have a larger knife, of course, basically you can just chop through it. But basically you take a tree, you put it under tension, you push straight through it, and if your knife has decent cutting ability, you can make sections on wood generally about the size of the blade rather easily. It has enough chopping power basically to take off small branches, about the size of the top of my pinky, relatively easily. 
I did have a bit of a concern there, or notice a bit of a difference, what I wouldn't say is a concern. If you look at most of your larger moors and transfer into your sort of Lucos away from your Pucos, you will see the end of the candle is basically flared. And that's for a two finger or partial or even one finger snap grip to get you a bit more chopping. And basically all it does of course is shift the blade length effectively much more forward, shove your mass out a bit more forward and you get a bit more speed because you have a bit more length and it increasing the chopping ability. And again you can hold on right by the end of the handle. Bruce has chose to go a different way with this and you really can't do that here. If you try to do cutting like that, you're most likely the knife is going to come out of your hand. So you can only go a bit back on the handle. But this is heavier than your standard moors of about its size anyway, so it came out to be similar in terms of overall power. And of course the reason that you don't flare the grip is because it's very comfortable in hand. If you're doing any kind of grips where the end of it is in hand, it's very comfortable. If you try to grip around your standard moor and you're not actually doing snap cutting, but you're actually trying to work with this grip in your hand, it's a high pressure point. So as with most things, there's a give and take on that. So easily snapped off the top, snapped off the branches, and then basically using a, a small stick, cut all the wood to length. Had no problem doing some notching for whatever you want to do for figure four traps or other similar type work. Easily cut the square notches, easily made points, easily made tapered wed notches, which also you can use for fittings. And back to using another stick, or a baton, again one of the things that I like to do when you get a knife like this is take a piece of wood. I like to use oak or birch because it's rather one of the harder woods around here or solider, at least stronger woods anyway. Take an old piece and find a small sort of knotty piece of something and use that with the knife to cut it into a section. Then once you got that section nice and cut, you can basically make yourself a nice little club out of that, and then with that club you can easily section and work on the wood and break it down. So basically you use the knife and anything basically, like a little old twig, anything at all, to cut, use the knife to cut into make yourself a decent mallet or hammer, and that makes the smaller knife much more functional. And it excelled at doing that, and then with that basic little mallet, easily split up the piece of birch, no problem, and combining that with some of the wood that I had gathered earlier easily shows a uh, ability to produce wood for fire starting relatively quickly. So again, just a short overview, very happy with the performance uh, so far, and I've been using it alongside a couple of other knives, and one of the things that a friend of mine mentioned right away is that it sort of lacks the ability or would sort of be influenced negatively by using the pommel as a strike point and that's true however if you look at some knives such as the H1 from Falkniven and they actually do this in all of their knives they leave the tang extended as a striking surface for that reason and they use the point to chisel cut into wood if you have a large tree you basically drive the point in and work your way around and then crack the tree off the problem that I found with that is that when I tried it, the handle, the Craytown part, starts to get bent up immediately. So after doing that a few times, I decided, well, I'm basically going to have to replace the handle in very short order if I do that. And the only way that you can really make that functional is to make the tang stick out quite a bit more or use a full butt plate on the end. And looking at Bruce's knife, you can obviously tell there's quite a bit of aesthetics built into it. I mean the finish, the presentation of this piece is far above the H1 or the Mora 2000. And you're not going to be want to be beating on the handle itself trying to use it for that type of work. But in terms of sheer ruggedness, it easily has the stock thickness to require to get the necessary strength for stiffness in the wood. Easily has the cutting performance from the bevel and the basic ergonomics are there in terms of the shape contouring. The other thing that I was a bit concerned about when I first got it is that the handle is very smooth so it doesn't have any inherent traction due to the texturing as compared to say again the H1 which has a very 
aggressive texturing on the handle. And you can see similar type blades. This one has a pronounced upsweep. This was designed primarily as a hunting skinning knife. So this has a lot of traction from, again, the actual texturing on the handle. The Mora also has, again, a textured grip. Bruce's knife is secure because of the shape itself. You can see the very, very prominent index finger on the front cut out indexes very strongly into your hand and locks your hand into position. And the very prominent swell in the middle, both ways, because it actually tapers in thickness and in width, locks your hand around that point. For all kinds of cutting, didn't have much of an issue. A couple of concerns I do have though, which I'll be looking at, what's it going to be like around greasy or oily foods? Will the shape itself still give enough security? I don't think there's any concern about going ahead on the blade itself. Because again, the very prominent index finger choil combined with the almost dropped blade gives a very high forward security, especially with a thumb on spine ramp grip or in pinch grips, of course, there's no concern whatsoever. And again, when you're doing chopping, the only concern that I have with the smaller wrist flicks, you don't want to go too far back from your index finger point because that's where you're actually getting the retention. If you go beyond essentially the halfway point, you're all on a smooth swell tapering back. So you have to make sure that your thumb and index finger are always ahead of that swell. So they had to push over it, not slip down it. So as long as you stay ahead of that, I had no problems, didn't need to overly tighten my hand, and like I said, easily clipped off the small branches. So in short, a couple of minor concerns about the ergonomics up front. Very strong cutting performance, very comfortable in hand, very secure in hand, no issues with durability uh, so far, don't expect any, really. And again, really looking forward to using this knife more as time allows.